Hello everybody, welcome to episode 5 of my tutorial series for Dyson Sphere program. I'm Icon and today we're going to talk about oil processing and if the time allows we're also going to go and create some new science out of that. Let's head on over into the tech tree so I can explain more easily. So the next big thing we want to achieve is unlocking those energy matrixes. As you can see, they look pretty similar to our blue buddies. That's because they are just the next level of science, so to say. Or you could also call it a new tier. To produce these guys, we're going to need energe energetic graphite. That's one thing we can already produce, but the other stuff we see there is only producible via oil refining. So let's get started. First off, we need to unlock high efficiency plasma control a small technology which we will unlock quickly, fluid storage encapsulation, that's all the technologies we're going to need to bring up stuff which stores oil and the like, and after that, plasma extract refining, which is going to be the actual oil technology. I don't know why it's called like what's well, called that in this game, but just that's just how it is. This opens up oil extractors oil refineries and the recipe to transform oil into refined oil and hydrogen if I'm not mistaken. So the thing here is we have to research that but as you see there things are going along quite smoothly. These guys here need a lot of more advanced materials. We're going to need steel and what's also a new thing on the list are plasma exciters. This here is all steel, so we are, from here on, ought to produce ourselves some steel, but also these plasma exciters. Plasma exciters are made out of prisms and these magnetic coils. So we're going to get on, get on up here and produce ourselves some plasma exciters real quick. As you can see here, I have completed the parkour. We have now access to all the low-grade technology things. I have made machines for the production of sorters, storage facilities, laboratories, all the stuff that we could, that we might want to use there. So we have now pretty nice stack sizes there. Stuff's a lot easier with this. So fluid storage encapsulation opens up storage tanks for fluids and water pumps. But water pumps, we're going to, we're not going to need them until a very, very long time up ahead. So, luckily we got pretty much all the necessary materials for the production of those exciters right here. The thing here is, though, those exciters are needed in really, really large scales later on, if I'm not mistaken. Practically most of the things in this game you'll need in larger scales. So, while we're just uh, setting ourselves now up for some, for some small thing, small time business so to say it's not going to work out in the in the bigger picture of things but that's not really the big issue starter bases are meant to get you across some problems and not be the end of the line so these prisms are going to be made in an assembler so let's do this like that and here we're going to add on up the recipe for the prism, which just needs glass. Luckily, we're already producing these. And we're going to slap right next to this another assembler. Just take care that there is enough distance between these two guys that they can connect. So we want to try that. Yep, there we go. So transporting prisms over there and producing plasma exciters out of these ingredients. So, there we go. Connecting these, giving them power. We're running out of power pretty soon, I bet. I haven't set up wind turbines late, as of late. But, uh, so, plasma exciters. As an intermediate solution, I'm going to set up a little storage facility here and just store them here. A thing that I'm already knowing right now is that 
This little site here will be remodeled later down the road because right now we have only access to a very minimal amount of the ingredients that we're going to use later and therefore I can't plan this thing without spoiling ahead all the stuff we need and going to do in the future. So I'm trying to give you guys good builds that work with the tools that you have at hand at this very moment. And believe me when I say the pre-production of these plasma exciters will save us a damn lot of time, even though right now this is this is just suboptimal. I don't like it for longer for, for longer um, term things, but well. I always feel like if it speeds you up right now, and if it's not taking forever to dismantle and reconstruct it, it's most likely going to be a good idea. If you're asking yourself sometimes if you should do something or shouldn't do something. All right, plasma extract refining, wonderful. We got that tech, and in the meantime, we just casually prepared what we'd need. So, energy matrix tech, let's get on that because we're going to need that anyways so let's see do i have i've got mining machines uh, that's what i need i've got plenty of um, bounty of sorters and yeah i think we're good to go let's spread our wings and fly so luckily at this point in the game we are really able to do things a little bit faster here's our good old friend the lab and as you see there, we're now going to expand that a little bit because the ingredients for the red cubes are going to be oil and coal. As you can see here, it's an easy, easy thing for us to get the ball rolling there. So I'll do just that. In the meantime, I'll just be grabbing myself some new fuel for the mech. Now, oil. Let's finally get started with the oil. In our inventory, we got already one extraction machine, I bet, because usually you always get one machine, but not this time. All right, the jolly good times are over. Now, you'll need one oil extractor per oil seep. So let's create that. Ooh, I forgot to bring stone bricks. Dang. Well, not that important. And you'll need after, after that, oil refineries. So we're going to create as many as we can there, but we ran out of uh, exciters. So let's grab ourselves some, and let's cancel that right away. Because you know, ugh, those stone bricks, I got them on a belt. There's no reason to torture myself like this. We just step on there, and we're just going to grab a couple, you know. No reason to. That's one of the good things when you have larger scale automation going on. Even if you are not actively producing these items there, you have pretty much pre-production going to speed up things quite substantially. All right. As you see here, the crude oil seep has a production ratio of 2.9 something. This is the amount of oil that this thing will produce constantly. Keep in mind, every resource in this game is actually, at the end of the day, finite. So we're going to need to search for new deposits someday in the future. Because there's just, you know, everything will end. The, the result of that is... At least let me add in a couple of wind turbines while I'm talking. The result of that is that the production rate of the oil extractor will fall over the course of the time. So the longer you use this, the less energy it'll produce. That's the TLDR. Uh, less energy, the less oil it'll produce, of course. Sorry. So that's why i usually plan my oil refineries in a way that i'm not using the entirety of the oil patch but only a portion of it so now we have enough energy for the time being and let's get on over there connect that oh i can't right well, okay i am I'm handcrafting a couple of them now because, you know, I can. And I know that we're not going to need endless amounts of these. 
So, this thing here now extracts oil for us. The extraction amount is exactly visible like this here. So, here you get a calculation about that, what it's going to be per minute. So we're going to connect that thing with a belt. We're going to pipe that on up. Yeah, this direction. We're doing. Ah, you know what? I just noticed that. I don't like the direction where I set the oil extractor. Always keep in mind that you have to build a couple of machines alongside with these things. And since the coal deposits are here, I don't want to conflict. So let's do this. Boom. Um, it's quite anti-intuitive, but with Dyson Sphere program, we don't we don't do pipes. We transport our oil on on belts. It's just like that. Let's not debate that. It's how it works here. So what we're going to put down now is a. Oh, I've grabbed some of that stuff accidentally already is a refining machine or are they oil extractor oil refinery where art thou here so oil refineries they have three sides where you where you can put stuff into them and let's set one down right now we have only one recipe to work with the interesting thing about the plasma refining is that it, it'll take this uh, oil there and transform it into do two different products. There's going to be refined oil and hydrogen. In this scenario, we only want the hydrogen. The refining process is taking, let's, uh, there's the recipe, two units of oil and processes them during four seconds. That means one refinery is going to use up 0.5 units of oil and every refinery is producing right, let's uh, give me let's not get me wrong there half a unit of refined oil per second and only quarter a unit of hydrogen per second so we're going to set on up four of these guys now so that we'll get oh no, let's not do it like that so we'll get a production of one hydrogen per second out of this whole complex so I'll let it run down this direction. And here we're going to need the sorters like that. The input is quite easy. The output is something new that we haven't done yet. So output wise, you can, you're going to pick up one inserter. And as you see here, you can filter them output wise. I don't know if it's quite visible there, but there's a little screen with filter. So when you press tab, you can tell your sorters what kind of material they should be exclusively transporting. So we're going to pick up one sorter for this and one sorter for that. And now let's just power it up. And now we get the oil on this belt and the hydrogen on that belt. And that's exactly what we want. Let's just shift left click to multiply this. That's why I wanted to have um, these like that. I really like this about the game that you're able to just to do one template and then multiply them. I don't really dig that. So we're going to bring up four machines like that because I feel like this is going to be enough for the moment. This oil seat here would right now be enough for six machines. The sixth one wouldn't be uh, working under full pressure or five machines if you don't want to stress it out too much but i think four will be just enough for us uh, for the moment now okay so here's the deal though these machines will stop working as soon as there's too much refined oil clogging up the exits and that's a problem so refined oil we're going to need that later for the production of plastic but at the end of the day many many factories end up with a oversupply of refined oil we're going to unlock the thermal power technology for that but honestly there are two ways that i personally i personally think there are two major ways how to deal with your excess refined oil 
One of them is to put it into thermal power plants, where you can just transform it into power. Not the worst, but I'm not too much of a big fan there, because power generation in this game, the name of the game is Dyson Sphere Program, so power is coming from the sun, mostly. In other words, once you have unlocked solar power, burning stuff for power generation is just inferior. But I just want to introduce it, how it works, because this is a tutorial series after all. So thermal power plants are super simple, just set them down there, and then you give them something to burn. The thing about thermal power plants is they are very much comparable to your mech. They, they burn stuff. Practically everything which can be burned can be burned in a thermal power plant. I haven't tried out what you can use for the thermal power plants to fuel them. I'd be super curious to find out what what uh, what there's uh, actually all possible. But that, that's, that's not the point here. The point here is you're able to transform your refined oil into power. And the other method that I personally prefer to do is using storage tanks. So storage tanks are quite awesome, but a little bit, in, well, special in a way, because they work differently. So we're going to do this like that. And I forgot to make a factory for splitters. Dang, I knew I forgot something. Well, we'll fix that along the way. So the interesting part about these uh, tanks is that you don't feed them with inserters, uh, sorters, I'm sorry, <laughs> but rather they are belt fed. So you can just pipe in that stuff. And there's another funny thing about these guys, and that's they are stackable. So we are able to just stack several of these guys on top of each other. And this way you can bring up pretty large storage stockpiles of oil. And I personally prefer to store that stuff instead of burning it, but I'll leave that to your own discretion. So, we got now a temporary solution for all this, but our machines aren't working anymore. Here you see another thing that can happen to you. The second output sorter hasn't been placed down. That happened because this piece of belt that I'm hovering my mouse above now was not placed down when the sorter was placed down. The game is just like that. If the belt's not there and it tries to place down the sorter, it forgets about the sorter. So place down your belts first and these problems don't happen. All right, let's toss the oil in there because we really don't want more of that unnecessary. And now we have the necessary hydrogen production. Awesome. Now I'm going to zoom over to the to the actual factory and I'm grabbing myself some labs and I think I'm also lacking some furnaces am I well maybe a couple so why is that guy not producing anymore because there is no longer an input of these so sometimes uh, accidents happen sometimes you have to fix your machineries when you are doing so many connections and you're doing so many different things don't expect from yourself that everything will just work out easy and fine so here's another nifty little thing when you right click something you can select how much of that you want to put on your stack just so if you don't want to grab the entire stack, for example. Now, let's get on over there and let's check out the recipe for the red cubes, because that's going to be our next big thing. I mean, I don't need to explain much about that, because we already know how science works in general, but the recipe itself is quite something else. So let's just place down one lab randomly there, so we can check out the recipe. What I'm planning to do is I want to adjust my production now that it'll consume that one unit of hydrogen I'm producing per second entirely. So let's check out the recipe. We see here the, that this recipe is transforming two units of hydrogen over the course of six seconds into one red cube. That means we'll have to divide these with 
each other, which means every three seconds, one unit of hydrogen will be consumed. That means we can right now let three of these guys work. That's that. We have like 50% of the... Uh... Well, I personally... Uh, there are so many ways to calculate this, but it sums down to one unit of hydrogen can sport three of these guys. We'll need the production of one unit of energized graphite to get the ball rolling though, so let's set that up real quickly. As you see here, it looks like it's complicated, but the more the longer you do these things, actually the less complicated they feel, you know? So we got already this here, so let's check this out. How's the recipe working out there? Two units of coal getting transformed in two seconds into one energetic, energetic graphite. That means each smelter produces half a unit of energetic graphite, because it takes two seconds, and it eats up one unit of coal per second. So this is going to be very, very easy, and I'm going to leave this little deposit here all alone, and we're going to set up a new guy, because this, well, there are different ways we could do that, so let's think about it for a moment. But I personally think it's logistically easier to, to go over on here. So, let's do this. We now know that we're going to need a production of two coal per second. Luckily, this would be already done with four nodes, because each node produces half a unit of uh, ore per second. So, we're, we're golden with one miner. Now, let's transport that stuff away. Zoom. And uh, we're going to go on over here. We need to supply power. And now we're just going to set on up the furnaces. Ah, smelters. I really try to keep up with the... Uh, with the namings of this game, but I fail so miserably. <laughs> and uh, we go for this one here. So, here we go. And let's put that up. It's very simple by now. And it's going to be all we need in terms of production to keep this whole thing satisfied. So, we actually and produce right here. Okay, so we're going to do this like the same time, like the last time. We're setting up three labs on top of each other, because we can, you know, and it's cool. And by defining one recipe, you define the others. That's quite worth mentioning, because in, in, the, in this stack, in this stack operational system, you cannot have different recipes inside the stack. Quite worth mentioning, but oh, I noticed that we've done something bad there. But whatever. The distancing could be better. You see, we've, we're on one, uh, one grid off. But we are producing exactly fast enough, so no need to worry about that. And we're producing our first energy matrixes. Here's one thing, though. We are right now only producing half an energy matrix per second, while we're producing one of these blue cubes per second. This is where we're going to be faster with the blue cubes than with the red cubes. In general, you want to try to have exactly the same amount of cubes of each color. This grows hotter and hotter the longer you play, because the recipes of these uh, science cubes grow more and more complicated, as you might have already figured. There li therein lies the problem that right now we are actually not able to set up a lab that would be holding up with the late game. So... <laughs> oh no! So, here we go. Endpoint must be horizontal. You remember this little uh, curvature from the planet? It's uh, it's trolling us here. But we're we're going to continue here. Oh, just above there. Let's 
so yeah we can't what a tragedy so okay we are going to just accept that we can't enter from this angle sometimes the form of the planet is just uh not going to cooperate with your plans so you just have to work around i mean in this scenario the easiest way to work around would be actually to put my labs somewhere else but since we have to do this anyway once the next color of cubes comes up i'll just leave it as the crappy mess that it is i cannot recommend this enough don't over up my systems that you already can see it coming that you have to reorganize and re, re retrofit them i mean if you totally love doing things like these please be my guest i haven't said anything but i personally I feel like you can't bring yourself into chores that aren't fun anymore. And so now we have unlocked red cubes. That means we have now access to a ton of new technologies. I mean, most of these technologies we didn't even need yet. I haven't even unlocked all of the blue technologies yet, but I feel like it's been pretty important for me because this is just a very, very good opportunity to set up oil refining and make something out of it you know all the other making all the other technology or the other usages for oil are going to be a while uh, ahead of us so i felt like good topic for the oil tutorial there will be later down the road a more complicated way of processing oil i can already show that here that's the x-ray cracking with the x-ray cracking, we'll get another opportunity to refine the refined oil even further into more hydrogen. That's a pretty interesting method, and we're going to need that because, as a matter of fact, the refined oil isn't nearly as interesting as the hydrogen that comes out, or at least for a very, very uh, large, time, or substantial time of the game so therefore that's why i am no big fan of burning away your your oil there and i'm even stopping this right away because i don't like it i'm going to store that stuff because i already know that later down the road when we start with the x-ray cracking the refined oil will be coming in very very handy and we can multiply our hydrogen out of that but i'm just uh, i just want to give you an impression about what's to come and we now know how to deal with oil. What I want to do in the next episode is I want to talk about solar power. Solar power is what we're going to use for a pretty large portion of the game. Because with solar power you have several way several easy ways of getting the job done to get my infinite power supplies. And therefore, I want to get on over there in the next episode, especially since it is a good topic to talk about, because this is the first piece of gear we're going to need silicon for. And, you know, silicon is something we're not producing yet. And it's a tutorial series, so next tutorial will be about silicon. Also, I'm going to take the liberty of unlocking some new upgrade things for the mech between the episodes because I don't think that I'm taking away too much from you guys when I do this because you know by now you can already figure by the way useful random fact at the end of the episode this is always the first thing that will be used up in your tank and it goes like this one two three four just so you know how to get rid of unwanted fuels that are clogging up your inventory. So, thanks for watching, everybody. Next episode, Silicon Incoming, and, well, solar power. I'm going to explain there how to set up solar power effectively, what to do there, and what to take care about, and we're also going to talk about larger scale silicon production, which is a pain, just to give you an intro, which we're going to be later down the road which is why we're going to import that later down the road from the neighboring planets of our system, just to give you already a first impression where it's headed. So you see we have two planets here in the system as far as I can see, two other planets of ours, and they both 
would provide us pure silicon, but more about that in the, in the next episodes. I just wanted to give you a bit of a preview. So drop your comments down below if you have any questions, additions, or whatever's up your mind. I'd be glad to hear from you. Leave me a thumbs up if you enjoyed, and of course, consider subscribing. There's daily videos coming up from my side, and I'd be super happy to have you. Have a wonderful day, and see you next time. Bye-bye.